Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel. And in this video, I'm gonna go over my top starts of the week for week 12 of the 2023 fantasy football season. This is the week that we have the Thanksgiving games on Thursday, as well as a Black Friday game, and then a bunch of games on Sunday. There are no bye weeks this week. Uh, and as a result, I have a lot of players I wanna talk about in this video. A lot of people stand out to me as being able to exceed expectations and put you in a position to win your week. So with that being said, Make sure to subscribe to the channel and drop a like, and let's get right into it. I promise throughout this video, I'm going to give you some options that are a little more under the radar, but we're going to start with an obvious auto start this week, and that is Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. He is playing on Thursday against the Washington Commanders. He had been on an absolute hot streak, according to Fantasy Pros. He was a quarterback one, then a bye week, then the quarterback three, two, and one, and then in week 11 against the Panthers, uh, he was the quarterback 17. Uh, they had that game easily handled. Uh, I know that Tony Pollard got in the end zone as well. Uh, he still had, you know, 189 yards and two touchdowns. Just not a lot of yardage. Wasn't really needed. Um, I don't know if he'll be needed a ton in this game against Washington, uh, but it's a divisional opponent. And as we saw in week 10, even though they were manhandling the Giants, they just still kept throwing the ball. He put up 404. He gets another divisional matchup, and the Washington defense is terrible. This is an amazing matchup for a player who might win people fantasy leagues just based off how he's been playing and if you look at his schedule moving forward uh he could definitely win people some titles so uh Dak Prescott is an auto start pretty much a must start option unless you have like some crazy option that might be you know a spot or two ahead of him but he's basically a lineup lock on Thanksgiving okay I said I was going to talk about some people who maybe aren't as desirable to start and we're going to talk about Jordan Love QB of the Green Bay Packers so I was unfortunate enough to draft Joe Burrow. I also, before he got injured and out for the season, did trade for Jamar Chase as well. Um, but I digress. Um, I now recently traded for Russell Wilson in a trade involving other players, including Jamar Chase. I'm going to post a video about that later. Uh, but I also did pick up Jordan Love off the waiver wire because uh, I have to replace Joe Burrow. I'm kind of piecing things together. Russell Wilson plays the Browns. That is a matchup I do not want to touch. Whereas Jordan Love, he's taking on the Detroit Lions. This is a team that you can beat more easily through the air than on the ground. So I think if the Packers are going to have success on offense, Jordan Love is going to have to throw the ball. They are also going to be without Aaron Jones. I can't remember if that's official as of now or not. I'm recording this on uh, Wednesday, 11-22, the day before Thanksgiving. So um, either way, Jordan Love is going to uh, have to air it out a little bit. And he had a, you know, he's been okay the last couple weeks, 18.7 and 20.9 points. He was a quarterback one the last couple weeks. Um, and this is just a guy that, you know, if you need someone to start uh, with injuries, there's been a lot of quarterback injuries, um, you can turn to him in this matchup. And we're going to go with another Turkey Day player. I have someone at QB as a start of the week in all three of the Thanksgiving games. We're going to talk about Brock Purdy, quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Um, he had a little bit of a slow stretch uh, in week six through eight. I mean, I guess in week eight, he had 20 points, but after the bye week, he's been amazing. Uh, he was the quarterback six a couple weeks ago, and then last week in a great matchup, he had a perfect quarterback rating. Uh, he was the quarterback two on the week, according to Fantasy Pros, 333 and three. And in this matchup against the Seahawks, I think he's going to keep it rolling. He is a kind of lower end quarterback one that um, he's a pretty safe play most weeks, and he's shown lately that he does have. Uh, some big upside, especially with the weapons he has with Ayuk uh, getting loose off of play action. Uh, George Kittle has been putting together some great games at tight end. And then Debo Samuel is still, you know, he's coming back from that injury. He should just keep getting healthier and healthier. And he just makes their offense that much more potent. Oh, and not to mention the fantasy MVP, uh, Christian McCaffrey, CMC out of the backfield who can also catch the ball. So Brock Purdy, put him in your lineup as a low quarterback one in week 12 on Thanksgiving. Next up, we have Joshua Dobbs, quarterback of my Minnesota Vikings. I like him a lot this week. Um, since coming to the Vikings, he's been really solid for fantasy and he's playing on Monday night, taking on the Chicago Bears. And before I continue talking about Josh Dobbs, all three players I've talked about so far, so far, they play on Thursday night, which is tomorrow as of this recording. Uh, for these players that play Sunday or even Monday, make sure you monitor the, the news. I normally put out these uh, videos a little closer to Sunday, but with so many games on Thursday and Friday, I wanted to get this out before Thursday. So obviously, you know, um, if things happen, like where injuries occur and whatnot, uh, people might rise and fall in the rankings. Um, and I know Justin Jefferson is a big X factor here. So if Jefferson suits up for the Vikings, 
Uh, obviously, that just makes Dobbs that much better. But even if he doesn't, I think he's still going to be good for fantasy. Uh, I think he can exploit this Bears defense. I never made him a start of the week um, versus New Orleans or the Broncos because uh, those matchups were a little tougher. And um, he put up 25 points with a quarterback three against the Saints. And then against the Broncos, he didn't have his best game, but he was he had almost 18 points, almost a quarterback one on the week. Now he gets a better matchup with the Bears. I think uh, he can you know, put up points in this game and he uses his legs. Uh, he runs a lot. He's amazing to watch as a rusher. So uh, if you're looking for a little quarterback help, uh, Josh Dobbs is someone you can put out there. I know in Dynasty, I have Tua and Trevor Lawrence, and I'm very tempted to play Josh Dobbs. So we'll see what happens, but I like him a lot this week as a low quarterback one, high quarterback two. And then my final quarterback start of the week. I know I've had a lot. I just like a lot of players this week. I'm going to go with Baker Mayfield, quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts. Last week wasn't great, but he was taking on the San Francisco 49ers. That is a tough, tough matchup. Uh, before that, the previous four weeks, he'd been really good for fantasy. Uh, seven, he was the quarterback 11, 10, 7, and 10. Um, and I would not be surprised if he finishes as a quarterback one yet again in a matchup with the Colts. Uh, Colts games are generally high scoring this year. And Baker has the weapons. He has Mike Evans primarily, Chris Godwin as sort of a safety valve. Um, and he kind of dumps it off to Rashad White a little bit as well. So I think he's a pretty solid play this week. Not a must start, but if you're looking for help with all these quarterback injuries, he's a nice quarterback too. You can put out there, maybe if you're in a super flex league, he's a nice guy to throw out there. So Baker Mayfield, I think he is a solid play and I like the matchup. We're going to move on to the running back position and I'm going to start with another Thanksgiving day game between the Lions and the Packers. And I really like the Detroit backfield, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, you're probably auto starting. He's been a running back one each of the last four weeks and closer to the running back one than the running back 12. Uh, but I also want to talk about David Montgomery coming back from injury. Um, we kind of were wondering who's going to take over the backfield, Montgomery or Gibbs. It turns out they're both really good for fantasy. And I love this matchup for them because the Packers are a team you can really beat on the ground. Uh, at least that's what we've seen a lot this season. And that's kind of why I didn't make Jared Goff a start of the week because, you know, Goff is at home. That's where he often plays well and he could have a good game. Uh, but I really think that this is going to be one on the ground. And even if Goff does have a good game through the air, some of that production is going to go to Jameer Gibbs, who's been seeing an amazing amount of targets uh, the last few weeks here. So um, I, Jameer Gibbs is an auto start at this point, especially against the Green Bay Packers here. And then David Montgomery is basically an auto start as well. Maybe he doesn't have as much upside as Jameer Gibbs, just because he doesn't have as much passing game involvement. Uh, but they're both a threat to score. They can both rip off big runs. Um, and it's a great matchup for both of them. So David Montgomery is more of like a higher running back two uh, type of play, but both, I love both of them. Um, if you're doing any DraftKings Turkey Day lineups, you know, try to pick which one is going to go off because one of them most likely will. And I think they'll both be decent. So um, yeah, play them both. Sticking with the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, sticking, listen to me, sticking with the Thanksgiving Day theme, we're going to go with Zach Charbonnet. Uh, in that tough matchup against the San Francisco 49ers, uh, Charbonnet running back of the Seattle Seahawks. This is all about opportunity. The matchup isn't great, uh, but Kenneth Walker, it's looking like he's going to miss the game. Like I said, monitor what's happening, monitor the news. If Kenneth Walker is active and playing, I probably would try to stay away from Charbonnet. Uh, but if he has the backfield to himself, I think he is in a great spot to at least be a safe play just based on pure volume alone. Uh, he can catch the ball last week when Kenneth Walker left early. He saw six targets. It only turned into six in for twenty it only turned into six for twenty two, but you love to see uh those type of targets. And even the week before he had five targets. Um and he's a highly drafted running back. Uh you know him and Kenneth Walker are both very good players. Uh they kind of limit each other a little bit, but in my league in one of my leagues where I have Ken Walker, um I also have Zach Charbonnet. And I actually traded Ken Walker like the like right before the injury. So it kind of worked out. Ken Walker should be back. It shouldn't be like a season ending injury, but um, it kind of worked out where now I have Zach Charbonnet. I can throw out there as a, a, he's kind of like a flex option, but you don't want to put him in your flex. You want to put him at running back because he's playing on that Thursday night game. You know what I'm saying? Cause you, if you have a player that's playing on Sunday or Monday, put him in your flex, put Charbonnet in the running back spot because later in the week you want to have that flexibility to be able to play, a running back or a wide receiver if you know some sort of injury happens or whatever so uh charbonnet is a nice little you know running back to flex play uh just with the increase in opportunity and hopefully the volume can kind of vault him to a good performance in a tough matchup speaking of players i traded i did trade ramondre in that league as well at one point but ramondre stevenson i didn't trade him because i hate him i just it just made sense it was actually in that jamar chase trade um but i think he's in a good place to have a solid game here 
uh, Ramondre Stevenson, that is, of the New England Patriots. Uh, he's taken on the New, the New York Giants. Both of these teams are really bad. Um, it's not a situation where, you know, most teams, if you're playing the Giants, I know they just got to win. But for most teams, if you're playing the Giants, I would say you're going to get up big and be able to run the ball in the second half. That is in the realm of possibility. But at the very least, I think this will be a close game. And Ramondre is going to be relied on heavily. He saw 20 carries last week, five targets. It didn't turn into a ton of production. Didn't get in the end zone. 11.7 points in half PPR. But even that, like as a baseline, that's very solid. And... If he does a little bit more with his touches or if he gets in the end zone here, um, you'll be really happy you started him. But at the very least, I think he's a nice safe running back too against the Giants. My next running back start of the week is going to be Raheem Mostert of the Miami Dolphins. They're taking on the New York Jets on Black Friday. So make sure to check your lineups on Friday to make sure everything's good to go. Um, but it looks as it looks like as of this recording that Devon A. Chan, he kind of got re-injured last week coming off of that injury. And it's he's probably going to be out. It, it, actually, we don't really know for sure. Like, there's no been no solid report that I've heard lately. Uh, I've heard he might play, he might not play. Uh, but either way, I think Raheem Moser is a solid running back to play with upside against the Jets. Um, not only is the Jets, you know, they're not the worst matchup for uh, running backs, but also they are starting Tim Boyle this week. Um, they're going off of Zach Wilson to Tim Boyle. They're they're both not good. Uh, at the NFL level, uh, but either way, whoever starts, the Dolphins should be in control of this game, and Raheem Mostert should see plenty of volume on the ground, especially as they have this game in control, which I think most people are projecting to be the case. He saw 22 carries last week, um, finished with 9.8 points. Not what we hoped, but pretty pretty solid still. So I'm thinking at the least he'll at least do that much, and if he rips off a big run or gets in the end zone or is a little more involved in the passing game, then you'll be especially happy you started him. But I really like him as a running back too with upside on Black Friday. We're going back to that Colts and Buccaneers game that I am targeting this week. And that is Rashad White, Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back. He's another one of my starts of the week. He's actually been really great for fantasy. Uh, weeks one through four before the bye week, he had one good game in there where he was a running back nine. But after the bye week, he had one bad game. And since there, he's been the running back 16, 11, 1, 12, and 14 and half PPR always over double digits. He saw, he's seen six, seven, four, three, and seven targets. Um, he's just very involved in this offense. Last week, it was a tough matchup and he still finished with 14.8 points in half PPR, only nine for 30 on the ground, but he fell in the end zone. And um, he also had seven targets, which turned into six for 28. But if you're in a PPR scoring format, that's going to accumulate and help you out. Week 12, it's a better matchup. I expect this to be a high scoring game. There are players on both sides that I like a lot, and Rashad White is one of them. I like him as a nice high-end running back to play in Week 12 against the Colts. And my oh my, how things have changed. Derrick Henry is no longer an auto start must play option. You know, it's kind of like if I were to play, if I were to say, hey, start Christian McCaffrey, you'd probably click off of the video because it's like, why am I watching this? You know to do that. But Derrick Henry is at that point in his career. He has had such an up and down year. He has shown glimpses of the past where he can take a ton of work on the ground and churn out a bunch of big runs and get in the end zone. But uh, when the Titans are down, they're using uh, Tajay Spears in the backfield as well in the passing game. It's a little bit more of a split. But in Week 12, I think this is a Derrick Henry game for a couple reasons. One, he's taking on the Carolina Panthers, who are a great, one of the best, if not the best matchup for running backs in all of fantasy. I made Tony Pollard a start of the week last week. He's had a very disappointing season, and even he had a good game against them. Um, they just give it up to running backs uh, to the point where, you know, as we saw with Dak Prescott, like I was saying, they didn't really need to air it out too much because uh, they got some work done on the ground, threw a couple touchdowns, and the game was over. Um, the Titans are a much worse team than the Cowboys, uh, but at the very least, I think this game will be competitive, and who knows, the Titans might even be able to get a lead and give Henry the Rock uh, to kind of ice the game at the end. Um, but it's a great matchup, and with the potential game script being the game script is the second reason I was talking about as to why Derrick Henry might be a good play. Um, it's going to be a close game most likely, or I think the Titans will be winning. So um, I think this is a game where we see Derrick Henry get you know 15 to 20 plus carries, get in the end zone, and honestly finish as a running back one uh, because this is just a great spot for him to succeed based off of kind of what we know about him now where he needs the matchup, he needs the game script, and I think he has a great chance to have both in this matchup. I got another running back start for y'all, and that is DeAndre Swift, running back of the Philadelphia Eagles. He was one of those players where I just wasn't going to draft him no matter what during the draft season, and he has 
He's been really great for fantasy. One of the better values. I feel like people don't talk about him enough, honestly. He's been very consistent, and he's had a couple games in there where, you know, 25.6 in week two, 18.2 last week. He's had some pretty big games in there. Uh, he's the clear lead back for the Eagles, and they're taking on the Bills, who are <laughs> they're kind of spiraling a little bit. They've had so many injuries on defense, and I just don't see a scenario where Swift isn't involved in the Eagles' success that I think they will have in this game. Uh, if it turns into a high-scoring game and the Bills' offense is rolling, even better. Uh, if we see a high-scoring affair, DeAndre Swift is used on the ground and a little bit through the air. So he's pretty much game script proof. Uh, and I just think he's in a good spot here in Week 12 to succeed against the Buffalo Bills. So fire him up as a running back one. A very safe running back one. Every single game he's been in, in double digits except for Week 1 where he only saw one carry and one catch. And in Week 7, he had 9 points. I guess in Week 9, he had 8.4 points. But that was against the Cowboys. So either way, he's pretty much in close to double digits or in double digits every single game. You, you pretty much got to play him. Um, it's it's a good spot for him in week 12 and you got to get him in your lineup if you want to win your if you want to win your week and I know you do so put him out there all right I swear this is my last running back start of the week I know I've had a lot this is the final one LG and it's a big one though it's Kyron Williams running back of the LA Rams it's looking like he's back and he's going to be the clear lead back for the Rams uh, since he's been injured Daryl Henderson and Royce Freeman have kind of been a nice little tandem for the Rams and they've actually had some success uh, in their own at various points since Kyron has been gone. Now that Kyron is back, I think he's going to be the clear lead running back here. Um, he had a bye week in there uh, during his stint of injury. They held him up one more week after that. Week 12, he should be healthy. Maybe he won't be, like, he won't see, like, as much work as he would if he was 100% not coming off an injury. But I still think he's going to be the clear lead running back here. Um, oh, and did I mention he's taking on the Arizona Cardinals? When we last saw Kyron Williams, he was taking on this same defense. He put up 20 for 158 and one on the ground. Didn't even have a target or a catch, but was still the running back two on the week with 21.8 points. Um, he is a really interesting guy to uh, consider starting this week against the Cardinals in week 12. Uh, they did cut Daryl Henderson, but re-signed him to the practice squad. Royce Freeman is still on the roster. Um, so I think that's the status of everyone last I heard as of this recording. And with that being said, Please monitor the news. I'm recording this on Wednesday. This game is on Sunday. That is a lot of time for things to change. If he re-aggravates his injury in practice or, or something, if a report comes out that it's going to be a, more of a split than we expect with Kyron and Royce Freeman or whoever, uh, you know, then kind of dampen your expectations a little bit. But if he's good to go and he's out there and he's getting touches, he's going to be good for fantasy. Um, so unless you have, like, really, really good options... I, you know, because there is a little bit of risk playing him coming off the injury, but unless you have those top end options, Kyron Williams is probably someone that I would be looking to start as a running back two with a ton of upside in week 12. We're moving on to wide receiver and we're targeting the Colts and Buccaneers game again. Mike Evans, wide receiver of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is someone that I am looking to start this week as a wide receiver one. <laughs> he is one of the best draft values in all of fantasy this year. I drafted him in our auction league along with uh, like Tyler Lockett. Uh, Debo Samuel, Keenan Allen, all these guys that no one was super excited for. And like, my, I just love my receiving core in that league. And Mike Evans has just been awesome. He's had a couple down weeks here and there, but honestly, he's been mostly consistent. I know like some, like against Buffalo in week eight, he kind of lucked into that fluky touchdown, but it still worked for fantasy. Um, he's the clear target leader there uh, or the clear wide receiver one. Chris Godwin is seeing some targets as well, but he just has no ceiling. You know, he's pretty much getting 50 yards every week. Mike Evans is the guy where, He's probably going to get at least those 50 yards each and every week, but he also has the potential to put up, you know, 171 or 143 or 87, like we've already seen this year. And he has a nose for the end zone. Um, he is a touchdown scorer. He scored each of the last two weeks, and it's a good matchup with the Colts. It should be a high-scoring game. I said I like Baker Mayfield this week, and I like him because he has Mike Evans. I think he's going to get at least one touchdown to Mike Evans. Maybe two. We'd love to see it. He hasn't had a multi-touchdown game yet this year through the air. Uh, but I am playing him as a wide receiver one this week and would not be shocked if this man gets in the end zone and helps you win your week. So put him out there. And remember all that stuff I said about, you know, I'm recording this on Wednesday. See what's happening closer to Sunday to make sure if what I'm saying is still accurate. Uh, that applies a lot to Puka Nakua. Uh, since Cooper Cup has been back, it, it's been a weird season for the Rams offense. Like when Stafford was healthy and Puka was the guy, Puka was the guy. Then we had Stafford get hurt. We've had Coop come back, or Cooper, Coop, 
Cooper Cup comeback. And that's all to say Puka Nakua has had his ups and downs. But in week 12 against the Arizona Cardinals, if Cooper Cup is out, you play Puka Nakua, okay? I think both could do well in this matchup if Cooper Cup ends up playing. Uh, but I really like him a ton if Cooper Cup is out, okay? Um, you can still play Puka if Cup plays, but I, I would limit my expectations a little bit. If he's the guy and Stafford is healthy and good to go, um, I think this is a matchup where he can find a lot of success. Uh, last week, he was 5 for 70 and a touchdown. He had, even had a carry for 7 yards, so put up 16.2 points in half PPR. was the wide receiver 13. I'm expecting more of that Puka Nakua in this game. So monitor what's going on, see if Cooper Cup is playing, or if he plays, if he's going to be limited, what the situation is. But uh, there's definitely some fantasy goodness to be juiced out of Puka Nakua here in Week 12 against the Cardinals. Next up, we got Adam Thielen, wide receiver of the Panthers. We saw him start so hot to begin the year. He's cooled off a little bit, but he's still seen, since his bye week in Week 7, he's seen 11, 6, 10, and 11 targets. It's turned into 72, 29, 42, and 74 yards. Um, he hasn't finished better than the wide receiver 24 since then, but he's had a couple games with 11.2 and 11.4. The other games were in single digits. Um, he just isn't putting up those monster games that we saw to start the year, uh, mostly because he hasn't gotten in the end zone. Uh, but I still think this is someone you can play as a wide receiver too, uh, just because of the matchup and the target volume that he is seeing. Um, he's playing the Tennessee Titans. They give up production through the air. And I think that this is a game where he can just find success sort of in a PPR setting. And we could see him get back to having a big game. He is a little bit older so is this a case where the wheels are falling off and he's slowing down kind of later in the year? Or does he still have it? He's still putting, he's still had a couple games with, you know, 70 plus yards here since the bye week. So I think things will kind of even out a little bit. We might not see him putting up, you know, 11 for 145 and a touchdown like we did in week three. Uh, but I still think he has some good games left this year. And I think this will be one of them in week 12 against the Titans. Oh, and you thought I was done talking about the Colts and Buccaneers game? You really thought I was done. That's crazy. Uh, I got another guy to talk about, and that's Michael Pittman Jr., wide receiver of the Indianapolis Colts. He's been pretty solid this year, uh, just very consistent. He's been in double digits weeks 6 through 10. They're coming off their bye week, and they're taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a dreadful secondary. He is an extremely safe play this week. Uh, he is the lead wide receiver there. It's pretty obvious. Um, they got Josh Downs there as well. That's a guy you could throw in your lineup, but Michael Pittman is the guy. Um, and at the very least, he's a safe guy, as much of a lock for double digits as you can get this week. Uh, and just with the matchup and, you know, his uh, his own talent and ability, um, if he makes a big play, gets in the end zone, he does have some upside in this game as well. So I'm starting him as a kind of higher wide receiver two play uh, with a nice safe floor in week 12 against the Bucks. And I just, I got to talk about Tank Dell. I don't care who he's playing. Uh, he is taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, which whatever, that's fine. Uh, but Tank Dell, wide receiver of the Houston Texans, you got to play him. He's been amazing the last few weeks. Um, I was kind of hinting that I trade, I made a trade involving like Jamar Chase and uh, and Kenneth Walker. Tank Dell is someone who I did get back in that trade. Um, and he's just been amazing for fantasy. I know there have been some wide receiver injuries where it's like, you know, certain players have been out and that just kind of secures Tank Dell's volume in the passing game a little bit more. I just think Tank Dell, what he's shown the last three weeks, uh, six for 114 and two, six for 56 and one, eight for 149 and one. He's been the wide receiver one, 11 and three and half PPR the last three weeks. I don't know how you go away from that. Uh, he's a wide receiver one play with weak winning upside and he might help people win their leagues. I don't think he's going to quite keep up this 25 point a game type of thing, but he'll have more games like that. I'm sure this year and throughout his career. And I think he's going to help people win championships um, especially with those two Tennessee matchups in the playoffs. So I would, I can't imagine you're benching Tank Dell, but this is just your reminder to like, if, if you're considering him or even like a Michael Pittman, like someone who like has a safe floor, I would go with Tank Dell just because I'd rather, you know, I would rather go with the guy who has that weak sitting, that weak winning upside uh, because he can, he can count for two players basically if he goes off. And if it's on your bench, your Thanksgiving weekend is just going to suck. You're going to be like, man, why did I not play this amazing athlete who's done nothing but be a flamethrower for fantasy lately? So fire up Tank Dell with 100% confidence in Week 12 against the Jags. To round out my wide receiver starts of the week, we're going to go with the Baltimore Ravens duo of wide receivers, Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham Jr. 
<laughs> they both got the questionable tag right now. So, like I said, as Sunday approaches, it's a Sunday night game. So, if they're if they're questionable and they might not play, you need a pivot option. But uh, they should be good to go. Um, just make sure they're good to go before you put them in, their, in the lineup back, obviously. Uh, but they haven't been great for fantasy this year. But this all comes down to two things. The Mark Andrews injury and the matchup. So, uh, in week one with no Mark Andrews, Zay Flowers saw 10 targets, turned into 9 for 78. Uh, 13.2 points and half PPR. You like that. Um, after that, he's been pretty disappointing for fantasy. Uh, but I still think he's a talented player. And with no Mark Andrews, there's going to be more targets to go to go around for these wide receivers. And I think Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham are going to be the main beneficiaries of those extra targets to go around that cannot go to Mark Andrews. Um, Isaiah Likely at tight end, he's going to be their new starter. He has shown that he's a talented player, but he's not Mark Andrews. He's not going to command that type of target volume. Um, and Odell Beckham has actually been okay for fantasy the last few weeks. 12.1, 10.5, and 13.6 points in half PPR. He saw seven targets in week nine and week 11. Week 10, only two targets, only one catch, but turned into a 40-yard touchdown. Um, and now, like I said, Andrews is out. So I'm expecting more of like a seven-target game than a two-target game. And they're taking on the Chargers, who are a amazing matchup for wide receivers we just saw a bunch of packers receivers a ton of them like three or maybe even four of them put up good games for fantasy um and i'm ex there's there's gonna be passing game production here so odell beckham and zay flowers they're not must start options zay flowers is kind of like a wide receiver two flex play that has upside because he's so talented he just ah i just wish they would use him a little better and then odell beckham just more of like a wide receiver three flex option um hopefully he can make a big play I sh i'm expecting kind of you know seven ish maybe even more targets in this game so i like them both as solid options if you're dealing with injuries or whatever and gobble gobble you're gonna play george kittle we're moving on to tight ends and george kittle is someone that i mean i don't know how you turn away from him uh he's had his like highs and his lows that's kind of been his thing the last couple years but he's on a high right now and unless you have like i don't know hawkinson or uh, Travis Kelsey, you're probably, you should be playing George Kittle against the Seahawks on Turkey Day. He's been a tight end 8, 3, 2, and 1. You can't go up from 1, so hopefully he just stays at 1. Um, but he's on a heater. You got to play him. Fire up George Kittle in week 12. And I'm excited to bring up my next guy. That is David Njoku, tight end of the Cleveland Browns. This is a guy I drafted in one of my leagues, and I cut him a few weeks into the year because he was doing nothing for fantasy. But he has been uh, amazing since week eight. The last four weeks, the tight end 5, 12, 10, and 7, uh, 15.7, 10.6, 8.8, and 9.1 points in half PPR. And you'll love to see it. He's at 8, 6, 9, and 15 targets. Um, even the week uh, in week 7, he saw 9 targets, turned into 54 yards. He had 7.9 points. That was enough for the tight end 11 on the week. Um, he's had five weeks in a row being a tight end 1. Um you know, it's amazing to see. And with uh, Dorian, what's his name? Dorian Finney Thompson, is that his name? At quarterback, he's been kind of looking in Joku's way because those are kind of the throws that are a little closer to the line of scrimmage. And from kind of what I've been hearing about him as a quarterback, that's a little more his speed than throwing it downfield to like Amari Cooper. So last couple weeks, in Joku, we've seen nine and 15 targets. And now he's, he's taking on the Broncos. He is taking on... Vance Joseph's Denver Broncos defense. They give up a ton of points to tight ends. Uh, he's a tight end one play. Still start your obvious guys over him, um, like your Kelsey's and whatnot. But I mean, I and Joku's a tight end one, like this week, especially against the Broncos. So unless you have someone who like is reliable and has upside, I would be playing in Joku in week 12 at Denver. And we're going back to the well with Taysom Hill. He had been awesome for fantasy weeks six through nine, finishing at the tight end nine, five, one, and four and half PPR. I made him a start of the week in week 10. I think I did, right? I have my list right here. Um, I did. And he disappointed 3.3 points against my Vikings. Then he had the bye week. Now in week 12, he's taking on the Falcons. He's going to be good. He's going to be good. Uh, he can do it through the air. He can do it on the ground. And let's not forget, this guy is also a quarterback, sort of. So Derek Carr is injured. 
Who knows what's going to go on with him? So as I've said a million times in this video, make sure you monitor the news. What's going on? Is Derek Carr starting? Is he healthy? Is he playing? Is he sitting? If Derek Carr plays, I still like Taysom Hill just based off what we know about him. If Derek Carr doesn't play, it's going to be Jameis Winston as the quarterback. But Taysom Hill, he might get a little bit of work in the passing game as well. He might throw a few passes here and there. Um, he's a threat on the goal line to score. He catches the ball. He runs it. He's just awesome. He's just a, he's such a unique player. He's very he's really fun. Just a fun guy to start. Like we play fantasy for fun. This is someone who's very fun to play uh, in fantasy. He's taking on the Falcons. They're not a good defense. He's had good games against them in the past. So fire him up as a tight end one. And he's always got that Taysom Hill week winning upside. Next up, we got Trey McBride. Since Zach Ertz has been out, he's been really good for fantasy. He's had a couple duds in there, but he's also shown an ability that most tight ends don't have. And that is the ability to put up big performances. 20.5 points in week eight was a tight end two and half PPR. 17.1 points in week 10 was a tight end three. Um, he's kind of been ping-ponging. So we had uh, tight, tight end one finish, not tight end one finish. Tight end one finish, not tight end one finish. Tight end one finish, not tight end one finish. And in week 12, he's going to be a tight end one against the Rams. Um, he can definitely exploit that matchup. That's for ding dang sure and you got to play him. He's a, he's a tight end one I um, as well, like a lot of people I'm talking about in this list. That's why I like them as starts of the week. Um, so don't I, don't turn don't just turn away from him just because he had a down week. He still had seven targets, five for 43. It's not great, but for a tight end, unless you have one of those top-end guys that you drafted early and are amazing, you're going to have games like that. So Trey McBride, I'd roll him out there again as a tight end one, a high-end tight end one, as a matter of fact. And as long as Dawson knocks us out, Dalton Kincaid is someone that you have to put in your lineup. Since week six, he's been a tight end one or better. I just said tight end one or better. You can't be better than a tight end one. But he's been a tight end one every single week, weeks seven through 11. Week 12 against the Eagles, I don't expect that to change. Hopefully it's a high-scoring game. And he's he hasn't seen fewer than six targets since week seven. And he's super talented, highly drafted. He was drafted to be this player and he's showing it get stefan diggs is the alpha one there but after that like gabe davis hasn't done anything lately dalton kincaid is their new number two so the eagles give up points through the air um and kincaid is a good player so he's a basically a must start uh you're i don't know how you're not starting dalton kincaid in week 12 against the eagles and that's going to do it for this video everybody thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate it please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more fantasy football content. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.